So welcome everyone to this uh, first session, uh, which is a live session with all the participants in the first virtual school and internet governance. My name is Alfredo Calderon, and I'm here with uh, Glenn McKnight, and we'll be uh, moderating this initial session of the first virtual school and internet governance, uh, which is a global initiative that Glenn and I uh, started off on a couple of months ago. Uh, please, if you have your mic open, please mute it to avoid feedback. So moving forward, uh, if you want to see the uh, slide uh, show or the slide deck in full screen on the bottom right side, you have a, an icon that will allow you to uh, have the slides uh, as a full screen. So moving forward. Okay, so I muted Betty. Uh, so moving forward, uh, as I said, uh, we have a packed agenda. We're going to be discussing why we, we created this first, uh, this virtual school of internet governance. We're also going to uh, learn who, who are the people that are involved in this initiative, as well as, as what are the features and benefits of this virtual school on internet governance. Uh, we might uh, touch on what are the immediate outcomes that we are expecting from you, and we're going to be asking you uh, to give us some feedback on that. And I'm going to touch on some ho housekeeping issues regarding the way we are going to be working uh, from now on uh, on the uh, on the course. So having said that, uh, uh, Glenn, go ahead. Thank, Thank you, Alfredo. Uh, welcome, welcome everyone to the call. call. Um, I'm going to walk you through why did we create the uh, virtual school on internet governance. Um, we basically wanted to come up with a, a model which was free, it was interactive and comprehensive, and we did this through first looking at the different models that are out there and that are comprehensive, that we saw where the gap analysis uh, exists in terms of speed and platform, and we wanted to make sure that the, um, that the platform stays within what is typically called the MOOC, which is the Massive Open Online Courseware. And uh, uh, Alfredo, we're getting a lot of uh, feedback from my mic. I'm going to I'm going to mute me and turn back to you because it looks like uh, I'm I'm actually getting a lot of, of echo. Uh, Edward, can you carry on? Sure, no problem. I'll I'll take uh, uh, the floor because you actually do have a lot of echo. So if you can resolve it during the call, great. But uh, I'll I'll proceed. Uh, so as as Glenn started mentioning, uh, the the whole idea of the virtual school of internet governance came after uh, in May we had a conversation and we decided to to review everything that was out there regarding uh, internet governance and, and the schools that were being offered. And since the uh, pandemic of COVID nineteen, we noticed that everything was going online and. It, 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 it had a different approach and we wanted to find a way to, to have something similar to a face-to-face, -face, although we know that this is in a face-to-face -face setting, but at least to cover as much material and be as comprehensive, offering something that would be free for anyone interested in taking uh, a virtual course on internet governance. Uh, the, the whole idea is to provide all the participants some form of interactive experience uh, and we're using uh, a few tools to, to do, make that happen, like for example, this session. Every week we're going to have a live uh, big blue button session where everybody is welcome as long as you are registered in the course. Uh, one thing that we're trying to encourage is to have feedback so that we can constantly improve uh, on this course. Uh, keep in mind that you are the first cohort, the first group 
of approximately 100 participants taking this course. We know it's not perfect. We know it needs improvements and we need your help. So if we don't meet your expectations, we're not going to get mad at anyone. We just want to know what we need to improve to make it even better. Uh, so again, this is not going to replace the face-to-face -face experience of a school or of the schools of internet governance. This is going uh, to be sort of a, an, an entry point for anyone interested in internet governance or those that hardly know anything about internet governance. Our surprise uh, is that we have a, a widespread of people from all over the world that do have some experience in internet governance. Others are willing to learn from those that have more experience. So our focus is going to be uh, to have a, a feedback interactive experience with all the participants. So some of you may have noticed that this, although it covers all the pillars of an internet governance and it does the taxonomy of the Internet Governance uh, DC Coalition. It doesn't actually have all the content that you might have expected, but we do have a lot of resources in, in the complementary resources section for each one of the modules, and we'll speak about that in a little while. So who, who are the people or the, the persons involved in this initiative? At, well. I mentioned uh, Glenn, which is the project coordinator, and myself, uh, Alfredo Calderon. I'm in charge of the uh, academic component, uh, trying to figure out how to best organize the content and, and, and post it in a way that all the participants can, can walk through it without any problems. So if, if you have any issues with the content, you can send me or Glenn an email, and at the end, we'll give you our email addresses. But you can also use the, the platform itself, which so many of you have already used to get in contact with me and with Glenn. And we'll talk about that as well, just as a refresher for some. Uh, during the summer, uh, we started working on, on this course uh, late May, and then in early July, we started asking for a team of beta testers, and some of you are on this call, which are actually uh, helping us out as teachers, and some of you are also going to be uh, guest speakers in, in one of the uh, 10 modules that we have in place. So uh, you'll get to know some of the uh, beta testers during uh, the following uh, weeks. Uh, and we have additional content uh, contributors that although they weren't beta testers, they, they submitted some ideas that we incorporated in the, uh, the course. In addition to that, each one of you have the capability to provide content to us that you feel will enhance the course. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the discussion threads as well. As mentioned before, we're going to have uh, guest speakers for the live sessions similar to this. Uh, we don't expect to have them uh, offer uh, slide decks or presentations. It, it's going to be more informal. You'll have reviewed the material for that week and you'll be in a position to ask questions to that person that we have that particular week because that is a sort of an expert in that module that we are going to be discussing in that specific week. So keep that in mind as we move forward. We're going to have 10 guest speakers. And as a matter of fact, the first uh, guest speaker we're going to have is Marilyn Cade, which is on this call. And Marilyn is uh, one of the founders of the whole internet uh, governance ecosystem. And she's going to talk to, uh, to us about that next week. So welcome, uh, Marilyn, and we'll have you uh, next week. Thank you for coming and joining us. Uh, so, Glenn, have you been able to resolve your issue? That's... Well, then, I'll, I'll continue then. Uh, so, in terms of the uh, features, 
The tool we're using is uh, Moodle. It's an online learning uh, management platform or system. Uh, we have it hosted in, in a service to avoid. Uh, please, whoever has his mic open, can you mute it? Thank you. Uh, so we're using Moodle, as I mentioned, as the uh, learning platform. Uh, the content we're providing is a media rich online internet governance content. What does that mean? It means that we have text, we have ebooks, we have video clips, and we point you to other resources through links and through complementary resources. We have a huge amount of resources that you might be interested in reviewing. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, we're not requiring you to read everything. There's a uh, sort of an entry level content that we want you to look at and we point you to more detailed information that you can uh, review. Uh, this uh, course and the platform we're using is mobile friendly. What, the, what does that mean? That means that you can use your uh, smartphone That means that you can use your smartphone and you can download a Moodle app that's free and it's available for Android and for iOS. Or you can download the Moodle desktop, which is also a, 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 an app you can use to access the content of your course and it allows you to interact with the content offline. All you have to do is download the section or the chat or the uh, module you want. You can review it offline. And if you're going to uh, do some of the quizzes, you can do them offline and then sync it online and you have access to internet again. Uh, it's a complete management system for students, teachers, and administration. So it means that uh, Glenn and I and the teachers involved in this, we're like big brothers. We're going to watch out for you. We're going to follow you through the courses, or through the course, through the modules. And if you have any questions, uh, as some of you have already done, uh, I'll be able, or Glenn and I will be able to respond to your questions in a timely uh, fashion. Now, uh, speaking of the timely fashion, what does that mean? That means that uh, we will be answering your questions between 24 to 48 hours. Don't expect us to answer immediately your questions. Uh, and you'll notice that Glenn and I will be online on the course, as some of you have noticed. There's a block on the right side when you log in that tells you who's online or who has been online for the yes. for last five minutes, and you can then interact with them. Uh, so it, it, you're able to work uh, and learn offline. And I've done that. Actually, I download a module and I review it on my cell phone. And then I go back when I have internet access and I uh, upload anything that I need to upload. Everything in our course, you can either download or you can look at the link where it's available and you can, you know, uh, bookmark it and use it as a reference. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have live sessions every Monday at 2000 UTC. Uh, that was the, the conclusion that came up out of the survey. Uh, one of the questions we had in one of the forms that we are presented to all of you. And we also have the capability of having live chats. Now, there's a, a difference between live sessions and live chat. Live chat is similar to what we're doing right now. Those of you that are chatting on um, the column to uh, the left side of the presentation, and Glenn and, and Shad are exchanging some information right now. You'll be able to do that live during uh, the course 
if you notice that somebody is online, you can actually interact with that person. And if he sees the pop up on the right, top right side of the screen, we'll be able to interact with you. We're going to have discussion forums. Uh, most of you have already started the discussion forums uh, through different uh, discussion threads. You have been presenting yourself. Uh, so we have some information regarding your expectations, your background, your interest, and we'll be, we will be taking advantage of that during the course. So, so don't be shy when we ask you to be an active participant. Uh, don't be shy if you notice that some people start talking to you, asking for your personal information in order to, to sort of set up a, an internal network of individuals that have the same interests, which is part of what happens in a face-to-face -face setting when we have a face-to-face uh, -face school of internet governance. In this case, we're going to do it virtually. Uh, another feature that we have incorporated are quizzes. Uh, some of you have already started uh, looking at the quizzes. They are very simple quizzes. They are easy to resolve. You don't have to dive deep into the content to find the answers. We just want you to have an idea of some uh, fundamental concepts that you should know. Everything else that you do is really up to you how you, you know, uh, navigate through the course and the content. Now, those of you that decide to complete all the quizzes and acknowledge that you have consented and have read the participant guidebook, and you do that by clicking on the right box of the participant participant uh, guidebook and you take all the quizzes and each quiz has a sort of a um, minimum a score of 80 percent to pass it and that means that you can take in this case you can take all the quizzes as many times as you need as long as you get 80 percent in each one of them you'll be automatically given a certificate of completion. And you'll notice that when you reach the last module, where we have the different schools of internet governance from around the world, the last uh, item that you'll see will be that it will activate and you'll receive an email and you'll be able to download your certificate of completion. Now, that certificate of completion also has a code. It's an, a unique identifier. And that is for our record, because we might know that you could use it in future activities uh, as a evidence that you've met uh, some sort of requirement in the field of internet governance. So whoever wants more information will ask us for that information using that specific code, which is a unique code for every participant. So keep that in mind. If you're seeking the certificate, take all the quizzes, get 80% plus check on the participant guidebook as having read it. Okay, so having said that, uh, this is an example of the uh, certificate of completion. It's digital. You'll be able to download it. it. It's signed by Glenn and by, by myself. And as I mentioned, you also get a copy through your email. Uh, and having said that, if, if you know of someone that hasn't been able to receive any information that Glenn or I are sharing with you, it means that they're using probably a corporate or company email, and the email service they're using blocks every message that we sent out from the platform. So please ask them to give us another email that will allow us to uh, gain access to them. So that's the certificate of, uh, of completion. Uh, this illustration gives you an idea of how you're going to see on your mobile device the content. This is the welcome message that we have in place on the left. In the middle, you have a uh, one of the modules and its introduction, which is the history of internet governance. 
uh, you'll see that there are some links here. And if you actually click on those links, they'll take you to a particular website that has some content that is being updated by that third party. And in this case, it's some uh, sort of dictionaries of acronyms and terms or a glossary. On the right side, you see, you have an example of how a module is built. It start off with the objectives. If you click on objectives, it'll take you to the objectives. If you click on, in this case, the history of internet governance, and you see that it has the, the icon is a book. That means that the content is organized in chapters, as in a book, and each chapter has a section or is divided by sections. And you'll be able to see a table of content of the history of internet governance in this case, and, and so forth. Uh, after that, you might see that we have this icon, which represents the discussion forums. And most of you have already participated uh, in one where you introduce yourself to the rest of the group so we can get to know each other and we can start building those networks based on interest that we may have. After that, we have a symbol that represents uh, the quizzes. As I mentioned, we have a quiz for each one of the modules. In this case, this is a quiz for the history of internet governance. And we'll see another screen to give you an example of how the quizzes look uh, like. Uh, after that, we may have a symbol like this, which is a page, which is an HTML page that points to a list of complementary resources. Those complementary resources go from additional readings as ebooks, uh, websites, videos, or texts that we think would help you if you are interested in, in learning more about that topic. And after that, we have a chat space. I mentioned before that we're going to have live chats, not live sessions. Now, live chat, as I mentioned, implies that you'll be able to see who is online and you can send them sort of an instant message. And if they reply, well, you're, you're chatting. So that's our chat space. And after that, you always see that each module has the big blue button symbol. What does that mean? That on Mondays at 2000 UTC, uh, watch out for the uh, the, uh, the change in, in, in time in your zone, which is going to happen in, in probably in a couple of weeks or days. Uh, watch out for that and click on it, and it'll take you to the uh, join session button, and you'll be able to participate in something similar to this. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, place them in the chat. Uh, I know Glenn is watching out for those questions and we'll get to them uh, at the end as soon as I finish this uh, introduction. Uh, this screen gives you an example of how the module looks if you use a tablet using the Moodle uh, app or if you're using the Moodle desktop app. There's one that you can download and use it, and it looks similar to this. Or you can actually use your browser, which some, some of you are actually uh, using uh, right now to participate in this uh, live session. Here you have two, two views. On the left, you have, a, I mentioned the, the, the book. This is an outline of one of the table of contents uh, of one of the chapters and you'll see that it has numbers and after each number you might have sections so you can click on all those you don't have to follow them exactly as they are you can jump around you can skip one you can go back and and you can see what's in each one of those uh, books in the module on the right side, uh, you have an image that displays how it's seen when you use the Moodle app on a 
a tablet or on a desktop uh, when you use the Moodle uh, desktop app. So here you have two different views of the same thing, so you're aware of that. And if you notice on the one on the right, there's a video right there. And in the one on the left, there's a video that you can uh, collapse in the table of content, gain access to that. Moving forward, uh, here you have an example of a quiz on the left from your mobile device. Now, I mentioned that you can actually download the quiz if you have internet access. Then you can work on it offline, and then you can come back and synchronize it, and you have uh, internet access or Wi-Fi available again. So here we have a question on the left, and on the right, we have a multiple choice uh, question. Now, this multiple choice question is a matching question. So it's a, diff a different format. As some of you may know, the one on the left is a simple multiple choice question where you select the right answer. After that, we have another screenshot. And on this screenshot, we have a an example of a matching question. In this case, you have to choose from a drop-down list which one corresponds to the phrase or the words wording on the left side uh, column. So you'll get a chance to see some of those questions. They're not difficult, but you you know you might have to look through some content to actually find the the answers you're seeking to match each one of the text uh so let me try, uh let me try again uh Al said, alfredo is that okay yeah it sounds much better okay so i'm using a, a different mic okay uh folks i'm just going to run through the student benefits uh and again please add your um um add your questions and and comments uh, throughout it we have roughly 35 people on the call today and and i'm hoping uh, people are testing it on their mobile as well and where you can actually find it. So this would be great. Okay, let's go through some of the benefits. We want to encourage you to see that we've created a clear educational roadmap for your internet governance. This is not a random choice of the topics. It's consistent with Diplo and other, other groups that um, have come up with the, uh, the key pillars of what internet governance is. Uh, we are trying to give you an opportunity to jump in Think of yourself going on a trip, and some of the areas that you want to visit may be really of interest to you, but your kids in the back seat have no interest at all, so you have to make some choices. So some of you may be really strong legal people, and you may just want to just sort of skip over that, or you may see that, oh, this is great stuff. I can use it as well, and let me share some other resources that you might want to put into complementary resources. This is... Um, let me let me be very clear. This is going to take a long time to have the definitive answer on the educational roadmap, but it's a start. And uh, so we wanted to create an environment for you to share your knowledge and experience. That's why we stress so much for you to introduce yourself. So, for example, maybe someone on the call here is like Rudy's on the call from St. Vincent, and Rudy's very interested. And, and looking at ways of coming up with a, a cyber uh, lab for maybe educating seniors or doing refurbishing of computers or increasing the awareness of anti-spam law in this country. You know, the idea is that other people in this group may have the similar experiences in their own country. And this is a chance to sort of, you know, we will be interacting with you as well, but we are facilitators. You know, this is your program that you what you get out of it is what you put into it so we basically stress that it's an interactive online experience and the value comes in the discussions the chats the live sessions and in hearing differences of opinion and this is very important you know we will we will give as much as possible if we see grant opportunities or fellowships that are going and we we do run 
the, uh, a group of us, the Internet Governance Hub, which has about 1,600 uh, people that go to it. We also have the Internet Governance Hub dot blog, which is in multiple languages. There's a lot of resources that we would like to share with you. So next slide, please. Okay, I think this is something that you wanted to touch on, uh, Alfredo. I'm sorry, but I'll go back on mute. Uh, thank you, Glenn. Actually, this is just to take care of some housekeeping for some of you that may have some doubts or questions regarding this. Uh, if you look in the uh, platform, in the course, in the right, the top right corner next to your name, you'll see there's a tick. If you click on that, you'll be able to see a drop down menu and you're going to click on profile. When you click on profile, the screen on the right comes up. Now, what does that mean? That means that we want you to update your profile. Uh, so click on edit profile, which is on the screenshot on the right, and you'll be able to do what's shown on the following screen. Uh, there's a section where we want you, we need you to actually write in your city. In, in this case, it says San Juan, but each one of you has should write in your local uh, uh, country, city. Uh, we need to have that information and it'll help you out figure out the time zone differences. Uh, so once you write in your city, you should see a drop down menu with all the countries uh, so that you can select your country as well and the time zone in which you are. So this is important that you take care of as soon as possible. I've noticed that most of you have done that. Some of you haven't. I encourage you to update that information in your profile as soon as possible. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send uh, Glenn or myself an email and we'll uh, help you out with that. So having said that, uh, some of you have also had some experience with Moodle and have noticed that you can upload your, your picture. Uh, if you have a picture, how do you upload it? To upload your picture, you have to have it in your computer ready to upload and you click on this symbol and it, that, this will allow you to open up another window pointing towards your computer or where you have your uh, file that you want to upload and you simply click on it, upload it and please, 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 uh, there's a, a short field where you have to describe the photo or the picture. The purpose of this is that we want to be compliant as much as possible for those that have some difficulty uh, reading and then they'll use some uh, reader to read them the text and wherever it's possible we're trying to uh, uh, meet that requirement although we don't have it available through the whole course eventually we'll figure out a way to have that available for those that have some special disabilities and want to meet as Glenn uh, is pointing in the uh, in the chat to the accessibility rules that are that Moodle follows and we're trying to be as compliant as possible. And I encourage you all that if you uh, upload something, please, if there's a field where you can write in some text describing any image, please do so. The other thing that I wanted to mention, uh, just in case uh, some of you are haven't uh, been aware or aren't aware of it, when you gain access to the course in the introductory or introduction module, there's the participant guidebook. This guidebook gives you, as is described here, some information regarding the meaning of each one of the icons, what is the conduct of behavior we are expecting from all of you. And, and, and please uh, be aware that there's also a section on privacy, our privacy policy, we're not sharing your information with third parties. We're just using it for our purposes internally. However, if you click on a link which belongs to some other party, 
uh, we don't have control over that. So it's really up to you if you want to provide them some specific information if they ask for it. If you consent to have read the participant guidebook and you are seeking the certificate of completion, you must click on the right side box. That will let us know and the platform know that you are, your intention is to seek the uh, certificate of completion. So be aware of that. If you haven't done it, please do it. Even if you've started looking or working with the content of one of the modules, go back and just click there and the system will automatically update that information. Uh, there's a section called important announcements. This section is actually a section where we're going to be posting uh, announcements and you'll be able to read them in this section. In some cases, you'll automatically receive a message regarding that. In other cases, you just have to click on it and you'll be able to see the details. And uh, another discussion forum, which most of you have already uh, participated in, is getting to know the participants. Uh, now, in, in this case, you have two options. You can post your information and you can decide to subscribe to follow the, the conversation. If you don't subscribe, that means that you're constant, constantly going to have to enter this section or all the uh, discussion forums we're going to have in order to uh, keep up to date with the exchange of information we're having. But you can subscribe if you wish to uh, each one of the discussion threads that are going to come up within each one of the modules. Uh, last but not leastly, this is an example of uh, getting to know the participants, and this is the discussion uh, forum that we had set up. Uh, some of you did a click on add a new discussion forum, and that's why instead of adding your comments or presenting yourself in the first one, you decide to create your own, like Fahad did. No problem. We'll, we'll be able to follow him as well because we're going to enter the same discussion uh, forum and we're going to see the different discussions that are going on. So if uh, Rudy, for example, decides to, in one of the forum, to bring up a, uh, a discussion thread on something specific, he can actually do it and whoever is interested in that topic will be able to uh, follow uh, the discussion. But please be as specific as possible when you set up the, the thread for that discussion, because if it's, you know, an introduction, it, that doesn't mean much. But if it's more specific, like uh, uh, IXP in, in Haiti, for example, then we'll be able to know that the type of discussion that is going on has to deal with an IXP in uh, Haiti. And uh, what is an IXP? Uh, what does that imply? There's a module where we cover that, so we're not going to dwell on that right now. So uh, we're almost over with uh, this introduction, and, and it's interesting that uh, Glenn and I have been going back and forth, and this summarizes what we've been discussing. You can please, and that's our, our adaptation to uh, a quote from Abraham Lincoln, uh, you can please some of the people all of the time and all of the people, some of the time, but you cannot please all of the people, all of the time. So, so Glenn, do you want to elaborate on this before we go into the next slide? Sure. Um, the the meaning of this is that some of you um, will see this as a Mickey Mouse course, and that that it's and you may treat it as something that's dismissive. And you know what? It's it's it, you didn't see it beforehand, and you get into it and say, "Well, you're way beyond it." And and we're we're more than respectful for, for that. And uh, the sooner you leave the course, the better, because other people would would probably benefit from this as well. Remember, we're reaching out to all the ISOC members, the ICANN community, the IEEE community, and we're looking at this being a cornerstone with the IGF youth as well, uh, a third discussion with, with IGF. So there is no shortage of people taking this course. 
I'm not singling out the people that are experts. I just want you to realize we try to do this course for, you know, we target it for people who are new to internet governance. If you're an expert in this, perhaps you'd be interested in being a speaker or participating. We encourage you to be empathetic what we're trying to do. And if you're overwhelmed with the material, which could happen, just take it easy. It's like eating an elephant. You start with a bite. And so you please take your time. Don't get overwhelmed with it. Uh, don't want, you know, if you're overwhelmed or reading all the ebooks or all the all the videos, we, we provide multiple sources for you so that you can actually, uh, you know, some material might be better than others. In some cases, we try to drive you to a section of a document so that is more applicable. So we don't, we really don't want you to be too overwhelmed. So, you know, it's very, very difficult uh, to create a program that pleases everyone. And, you know, we're trying our best and we hope it meets your needs. Back to you, Alfredo. Thank you, Glenn, uh, for that. Uh, uh, it, in this slide, we're giving you all the uh, ways you can get in touch with us. Some of you actually learned about this initiative, probably visiting the website we have in place, which is www.virtualsig.org. Uh, some of you already, well, all of you are in the uh, system, so this is the URL for the online platform. If you know of, of someone that's interested in taking the course, and since this cohort is full, uh, they can actually click on the login page and you know ask us, Glenn or myself, uh, how to get more information. Uh, we have on the website a section on frequently asked questions for those that may have some questions. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook as Virtual Sig. Uh, so we have a uh, page on Facebook where we post information regarding activities, events that are happening. Uh, keep in mind that we also do that within the course. If you've uh, walked through the course already, you'll see that on um, the course there's a dashboard on the left and there is a section on calendar and you'll see there the uh, events that are upcoming in the near future. And if you click on a date and click on the link, it will give you some information that would allow you uh, to get more details on how to register, when's the event, how long is the event, uh, whom do you need to get in touch with uh, in order to participate in that event. Uh, actually, after this uh, session, there's uh, an event going on at, at large. At large, for those that don't know what it is, it's. Uh, community within uh, ICANN, the Internet Corporation of Assigned Names and Numbers, where we have weekly webinars and we're going to have one at 5 o'clock or uh, 21 UTC, which is going to be an interesting uh, topic for us at large, the end users within uh, ICANN. Uh, so uh, Glenn's email is info at virtualsig.org. My email is registration at virtualsig.org. So all information regarding your registration, uh, your process within the course, getting your certificate at the end is on me. And any other information you need, you can ask uh, Glenn uh, for the details. So having said that, we're at the end of this introduction and we're open now for questions. So if you have any questions, uh, the mic is yours. Just uh, click on it or uh, let us know through the chat if you have any questions. Well, Glenn says he likes the, the, the mask. Of course, we're, uh, we're on a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, so we all have to wear masks if we're going to interact, although it's in a virtual format. So does anybody have any questions? If there aren't any questions, you can always uh, 
get in touch with us through email and through the, the course itself. Uh, you can actually uh, contact me in private or... Uh, Ruby, you have a question? Um, I, well, I was, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, good. Um, I just wanted to you know, I think um, looking through this, um, I just have to get used to using this Moodle platform, basically, uh, before I actually get into the course, I think. Yeah, because I haven't used it before, so it's quite interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah and th there's no problem with that, Ruby. If if you have any questions, just let, let me know, and, and we can actually give you a, 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 a walkthrough. Uh, and, and we're not doing it right now because it'll take us some time, and we only have uh, 14 minutes left for the top of the hour and we know that people in some parts of the world are it's quite late for them or early morning for others and we all have to to work as well any other questions uh, uh yes uh those that have asked if we can rotate the the uh, live sessions will work on that. Uh, so uh, what we'll actually do, Glenn, uh, we'll create sort of a uh, short survey and we'll probably ask for a couple of time zones so we can set it up probably early in the morning our time and late in the afternoon our time so that will allow uh, people from different time zones uh, to, to log in and, and participate in the live sessions. Well, but we'll we'll set it up and we'll ask you, uh, since you're our audience, uh, to 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 work on that. Uh, yes, actually, Rola, there's there's a lot of information there, and uh, we'll be sharing it uh, with different with the different rattles within ICANN and different organizations outside. Uh, we have been already uh, uh, doing some presentations to different groups, and we know that they are interested, but as we mentioned, this first cohort is full. Uh, uh, right now, Glenn and I, we're, we're the only two individuals managing the whole system and taking care of most of the communication with, with you, the participants. <clears throat> so bear with us if we don't answer your questions immediately, but we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible. Uh, yes, uh, it's important that you all know that uh, some of the work we've done is being sponsored by uh, PIR and Zira and uh, other groups uh, that we're looking into to sponsor uh, this initiative. Uh, there's some cost involved, so any help that you can give us contacting people that are interested in supporting something like this, it's welcome. Uh, besides that, uh, uh, we're working on translation for the uh, content eventually. That will happen after we have the, uh, the content as thoroughly evaluated uh, by you guys and the next three cohorts so that we can uh, start working on translating the content in different languages. And that's part of the uh, work we have ahead of us. Uh, Glenn, do you have some final words? Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Alfredo. It's a real pleasure to meet all of you uh, remotely. Uh, many of you I, I've met through uh, going back to Serenata. I, I met her back in 2013 at my first African School of Internet Governance. And uh, uh, Michelle is here. So many people I, I've met and fantastic people that, that are real valuable to to meet and and uh uh that are really knowledgeable in their countries and but i think you know you're not alone and and the virtue this this virtual community we're having is some people here are really strong on the isoc community but not so much on on ICANN or maybe not know, they don't know anything about the ietf so what we're trying to give you is a sampler if we see stuff that comes down the pipe, whether it's IFF or something, 
or Ford Foundation or anything, I will share it. Alfredo will share it. If there's any funding opportunities or fellowships like Mozilla, we also expect all of you to do the same as well. We're all part of the same community and like we're brothers and sisters in this journey. And so we really, really try to encourage you to see this. Uh, the, the cost of admission here is nothing except a bit of your time and being open and friendly and, and sharing your information. Be courteous. Don't be patronizing because some people just, you know, English is not their first language. And I appreciate all the people who are on this call that are, you know, English is not their first language, like Rick Sum from Venezuela and many, many others here. We really do appreciate the fact, oh, yes, Shah, yes, I did meet you at the IETF in Singapore. Yeah, a lot of these people, it's nice to be able to to get a, to know them a little bit more. And and thank you, Adam, for joining as well. Ad, Adam is a senior person with ICANN. Uh, so we have a real depth uh, of the people that are coming in. And it's really important because many of you may have been fellows with ICANN. May, many of you may have been fellows with ISOC. And, you know, you know us by name, but you haven't really heard our voice or, or met with us. But we're here to support you, and, and we look forward to this journey. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for those words, and, and, and thank you to all of you that are on this call, our first uh, live session. I see that a few of the uh, participants uh, will be meeting more often than you think, uh, and uh, we'll keep in touch. If there's no further question, uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, so start digging into the content at your own pace. So thank you, have a great day. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. See you around, bye to all. Thank you all, bye-bye.